WNYU FM, the new afternoon show. Richard Lloyd from Field of Fire, Soldier Blue, and with us in the studio this afternoon, whoops, is Richard. How you doing? You didn't <laughs> hear am. that, but the next song came blasting into I'm my head. I'm doing real here. well. Thanks. Doing okay? Let's tell him before uh, the Richard Lloyd we heard from the new Bad Brains album, One Against One or I Against I. I can't exactly figure out what they're trying to do there. And Hired Gun. Uh, but Soldier Blue was a song we were just listening to from the new Richard Lloyd LP. And it's not... It's new in the United States, released on celluloid, but yeah. it was out about six months ago in Sweden? Uh, approximately, yeah. Just in Scandinavia, Sweden, Finland, uh, Norway, originally. Mm -hmm. That's where it was recorded. So why go to Sweden to record the LP? Frankly, they're the ones that, that uh, asked if I'd like to do it first. The, the circumstances... Uh, which brought that about are um, um, kind of long to talk about. Yeah, well, but that's what uh, we're here for. <laughs> um, I was in New York and trying to figure out how to get myself back into the music industry, which I had been out of for some time. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we all are maybe aware of the music business, is an inertia industry, and I had lost my inertia. And I was uh, actually meditating on what I should do with myself. I had several alternatives. One was to play local clubs and hope to get some uh, movement that way. Uh, another was to approach the people in the music industry that I knew who, who had told me, you know, if whenever you're free, come by and talk to me. We'll talk about this and that. And the other one was to um, get a day job and save up money and go into the studio and do a demo. In the middle of this meditation that I was uh, engaged in, um, kind of asking for guidance on which line, you know, uh, do I follow, the phone rang and it was um, a friend of mine had gone over there on vacation. They had asked me a couple of months previous, did I want them to look into the possibility of maybe doing some shows over there. Mm -hmm. And I said, sure, and I forgot about it. Well, in the middle of this meditation, the phone rang, and it was my friend Keith, who also appears on the record. Mm -hmm. uh, as a, He's a guitarist. Right. And um, the first words out of his mouth were, um, there's a record... Uh, hi, this is Keith. There's a record company over here who wants to fly you over to do an album. Do you want to make a record? <laughs> and uh, it was like 4.38 in the morning. Right, 4.38? Yeah, I had a digital clock that was right by the phone. So, I mean, that's how that happened. Hmm. And I said, yes, you know. When, um, is there, do you think there's a, a particular market or a voracious market for uh, what's going on with you guys? When I say you guys, former members of television, Richard Hell recorded with the Voidoids in Sweden as well, or in Scandinavia, that's true, right? Now, was, would you say... Did he? Yeah, oh. yeah, the Voidoids <laughs> was recorded there, so that's nothing you know about, or it's something that they're interested in there, or... Well, Scandinavia was a place that I had a strong um, following. Television was, you know, remarkably successful amongst, v with very young fans, mm -hmm. you know, sort of like the Bay City Rollers. The <laughs> Scandinavian followers of the Bay City Rollers were kind of like the television fanatics. Wow. And they, like, you know, their support is to this day, like, you know, they come and, uh, you know, greet any one of us with, like, tears in their eyes, you mm -hmm. know, that, uh, I mean, it's really remarkable. Right. So it was also an area of the world in which I knew I could develop, um, you know, I would have the support that I mm -hmm. felt was necessary to, to, like, getting back on track. Right. You know, and it was also out of the way enough, because I don't think that there's, you know, um, there aren't enough places for people to rehearse in public anymore. You know, you come out and you've got the media bloom all over the, right. all over the place. And it, you're, if you're good, you're good. And if you're bad, you're you know, people are talking about it the next mm -hmm. day. I needed a place where I could go and, like, uh, you know, um, they had a studio in, in the basement. The, rec the record company owned it. Mm -hmm. I could spend uh, untold hours there right. and just, you know, and be out of the way right. and get my confidence back because that's another, you know, valuable asset mm -hmm. to have. You, say mention, you mentioned getting your confidence back. Obviously, you've been going through some things that uh, you'd lost your confidence. How, what kind of process did you have to go through to... Uh, 
to return to a state where you could put out a record or go into the studio and record with confidence? Well, the the thing that I uh, I'm alcoholic, mm -hmm. uh, um, plain and simple. You know, I'd been detoured by this what is basically a not uncommon ailment. It's mm -hmm. a degenerative allergy, and it gets in the way of your career. It's like poison ivy. If you have poison ivy, and and uh, somebody tells you don't scratch, you'll, the rash will get worse. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, no matter who says it, your mother, your wife. Uh, your parents, uh, your friends, you're going to scratch. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with alcoholism. Uh, yeah. Having alcoholism, you develop the desire to drink, and people tell you don't, and your career will go down the tubes, and your life will become a mess, and you can't hear them mm -hmm. because you're engaged in an allergy. Right. Um, you know, personally, I, ha um, I had to go through uh, the arresting of that particular health crisis you know because it had gotten the way of my career and it had gotten in the way of my personal life and I had to do that first right. and I had to rebase my life on a, on a principle of um, no mood altering substances no drink no drugs right. uh, for a period of time mm -hmm. you know and I had to put the music on the shelf because you can't fight 16 battles all at once right, sure. you know you got to take care of the, the if you had cancer you'd be taking care of it right. you know well, I had a drug addiction and an alcoholism that I had to take care of, so I took care of it. You know, then, uh, I mean, performing musically is a lot like riding a bicycle. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've either got it or you don't. If you never had it, alcohol and drugs won't give it to you. Right. And if you ever had it, they won't take it away, mm -hmm. intrinsically. But, you know, so I just needed a space in terms of, and I, I mean, I won't say that I lacked confidence, but in other words, just to build the, the pure muscle of performance, mm -hmm. you know? Do you think that, um, I was reading the Encyclopedia of Rock, and whenever you read one of these things, you, um, you know, you look towards things as kind of history, and it lists you as, in 1974, as a California drifter in 1974 on your way to, uh, to New York. Would you say all that followed television was a stemming from this supposed image of, of a drifter sort of person? Excuse me. Uh, uh, first of all, I'm not from California. <coughs> okay. Clear that up. <laughs> Second of all, I always wanted to be a drifter, but I never had the courage. <laughs> you know? Right? Okay. I mean, that that's the grand plan, isn't it? To, you know, ride the rails. <laughs> right, sure. But, you know, uh, I know I never had the courage so for that. That's but a romantic nomenclature? Precisely. Uh, rock journalist. Okay. The new LP, which is more important, because that's what's happening now. Yeah. You produced it yourself. Um, yeah. <laughs> for what reasons? Did well, you not to bring in somebody from the outside. There were a couple. There were budget reasons. The company that brought me over there, although they're very, were very large in Scandinavia, were not. You didn't have the, f you know, the wherewithal to bring in a top-flight producer. Mm -hmm. um, as it happened, I wanted the creative control. I had been burnt before. That was another reason that I didn't record for so long, mm -hmm. was that I had some very bad personal experiences with the machinations of business, mm -hmm. you know? Si uh, people s who you think are going to be good, you sign a paper, you find yourself in a studio with them, they're out of their minds, right. and yeah. you can't do anything about it, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, it does happen, and it, it, I didn't want it to happen to me again. Um, so they uh, agreed to let me produce my own record. Hmm. As it happens, I got in there, and the, you know, the, it was uh, you can't be in two places at once. You mm -hmm. can't be performing and engineering and do all in, right. doing all of this. Uh, so I nearly drowned in the process. <laughs> and finally, they had there was the in-house guy whose uh, name is Stefan Glauman. I said, Stefan, you know. Uh, you got to come in and help me finish this, and mm -hmm. you know, and we'll call it a co-production because I was just swamped with the, the responsibility. Mm -hmm. of the so, you know, so it's a real co-production in terms of, of the creative, um, you know, freedom which right. I needed, plus the you know just the mixing expertise and and just you know stuff like that. Let's check out another track. Okay. Listen to Love and Man, and is there Great. any particular sort of thematic? of life you've got this you feel more warm about life and putting songs like this on the record uh i don't 
I don't know how to respond to that. Maybe I mean, it wasn't a proper question. Uh, I'd <laughs> say, uh, I guess we should just listen to it. That's the best thing to okay. do here. Uh, Love and Man is a really simple song. I mean, it doesn't say anything beyond what it, you know. What it implies. What's in there. Richard Lloyd from the Field of Fire LP talking with us on the New Afternoon Show on WNYU FM New York. Or for whatever imports cost these days, you can go out and get it for a much more American price, let's yeah. say. And we're listening to Lovin' Man. Got the man in the studio with us this afternoon, Richard Lloyd. And um, you going to be performing anytime soon? I know you've been playing around. We're at the Ritz this evening. That's right. Oh, with God, the Smithereens. The Smithereens. <laughs> I'm yeah. out of it completely. We're going to be, uh, you know, playing at, uh, at 11 o'clock. Well, that's right. We've been giving tickets away to that all week. I should have known. Well, somebody will be there then. <laughs> <you know? laughs> I'm sure. Me too, as a matter of fact. Uh, this, one of the quotes I've read about this record is that it doesn't hide behind a veil of illusion. Have uh, past records done that, or is that something you really said or somebody just picked up on one day? Past records of mine? Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm just asking why you would say that about this record. It doesn't hide behind a veil of illusion. Uh, well, I don't recall saying that precise thing. But I mean, it's a, as far as production goes, it's a very nuts and bolts record. Mm -hmm. You know, there aren't a lot of gimmicks in the uh, in the on the sound end of it. Mm -hmm. You know. So did you get what you wanted out of the record? You know, uh, I listened to it. You listen to a record so much in creating it, and it's only a, the passage of time that gives you hindsight as mm -hmm. to like. You know what its real value is, right. but so I mean this. I don't. Hearing it now, um, the major part of it surprises me mm -hmm. in its vitality, mm -hmm. and that is more than you know um, makes me happy. Right. I mean, we get some wailing guitars on this thing. Yeah. Serious and I mean, enjoyable for those of us who are guitarists. I mean, there's something about about. Um, movement after stagnation mm -hmm. that this that that record field of fire really captures for yourself personally. for myself personally you know um i mean there's a desperation a need to to like um and it's that it's not show offy mm -hmm. you know it's just i mean it's uh authentic drive mm -hmm. so field of fire would that be a metaphor for a burning that you have now, or it, not to be too... Uh, no, Field of Fire as a it. metaphor is what Hendrix and Joplin didn't survive that that I did. I see. Hmm. Very good. Which is why the next track, Watch Yourself, would be uh, important. Well, thematically, I have a propensity to, to um, like danger, mm -hmm. you know? I want to discuss um, the seedier aspects of, of you know, um, grabbing the live wire, mm -hmm. so to speak. Now, would you say that this is part of you personally in your day-to-day -day life, or is this a presentation of a character? Well, for let's the put music it this way: when they when of... when we f had our first TV when I was a little kid, and they said, "Well, <laughs> you know, uh, be very careful of the plug." Right. Um, you know, electricity and all of this no nonsense. And I mean, I got, what I did was I pulled the plug halfway out and I licked my fingers and I grabbed it to find <laughs> out what the juice was. And I got jolted up to my shoulders and, you know, well, that's what that's about. But I don't right. go, you know, I don't go dashing in front of trucks for right. a thrill right. <laughs> on a day-to-day -day basis. My day is pretty well organized into uh, disciplines regarding my own Himself. I do singing lessons, I practice guitar, I, you know, do calisthenics for my forearm. Right. You know. <laughs> really? Your fretting arm? Or? I, like, uh, have this rubber donut that I've been squeezing <laughs> <laughs> to, like, you know, strengthen my grip. Really? Uh, for the fretting hand? Yeah, for the fretting hand. Wow. You know. But, but what I'm talking about in, you know, uh, I guess is a natural proclivity that I have to investigate, you know, I don't think anything is forbidden. So when you're saying watch yourself, 
in this next I'm song. telling me and and whatever you know is I'm in contact with mm -hmm. that both better beware I can dig it. you know because uh, conflagration can come from uh, from any source you know including spontaneous combustion is right. a, a wonderful <laughs> wonderful one well let's hope we don't both explode here on the new afternoon show with this <laughs> wild track from Richard Lloyd's Field of Fire LP watch yourself on the new afternoon show yeah so uh Give me a couple of kind of health pills. For yeah, my fighting cold. laryngitis. Silver seals. What golden were, seal. Golden seal. And those were yeah. what? What were what were in those things? You said it was a golden seal. Uh, you look, you could look it up. It's yeah. a plant. A it's plant. A widely cultivated, medicinal plant. Really. And, and as I was saying, George Washington grew it. There was a golden seal society, you know, yeah. advocating it. It's. Uh, um, kind of an internal cleanser. Mm -hmm. It's slightly antibacterial, hmm. and uh, it's great for you as a, in terms of a tonic to take once in a while. And if you have a cold, I mean, I had no voice this morning, and mm -hmm. I got up, I called my vocal teacher, and mm -hmm. said, well, I do, you know. All right. <laughs> she told me a whole bunch of things, and that was one of them. So voice lessons now, you're doing this every day, or a couple times a week, or how's uh, that working? Yeah, well, I sing every day, but I... I take a lesson once a week. And what do you get from that lesson? Broke. A lot, <laughs> lot less wealthy. <laughs> like, okay. You know, I get these tapes that then I take them home and I, and I do it again and again and I again. See. It's a lot of like, you know, it's physical exercises for the larynx. It's mm -hmm. opera type exercises, mm -hmm. you know. Mm. So mm. They, do you feel like they're helping you as a singer? Uh, yeah, most, assu most assuredly, mm -hmm. you know. In what sense, from an opera point of view, belting it out, so to speak? No, just, uh, you know, not to having to fight my uh, throat to be on pitch. I mean, you know, I'm also fighting, if any, if there's a, ever been a criticism of me, it was, I was, I've always been well known as a guitar player, mm -hmm. but that, you know, my singing hasn't been up to snuff. Mm -hmm. So to combat that, you know, um, I, I've been doing these other you know disciplines mm -hmm. and taking vocal lessons is one of them and i went to about you know six or seven different people be found, before i found somebody who you know the relationship is successful mm -hmm. and i've been going to a woman named katie agresta for mm -hmm. i guess six or seven months and it has made uh, you know miraculous differences in in my own feeling about my singing you know right so would you take, um, it, was it hard to find somebody who would take you seriously as a singer because you sing rock and roll, or when you say, or you just had to find somebody that you could work with? It's just a matter of chemistry, you mm -hmm. know? Finding somebody with a method that didn't make you, f you know, that, that could keep the frustration level low, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm not a person who's renowned for my patience, right. you know, and uh, just developing that kind of, you know, ongoing discipline and talking about chemistry what kind of band will we see tonight at the Ritz I have a woman rhythm guitar player mm -hmm. named Donna Fisher who is new we did we've done one show with her mm -hmm. so far um, my bass player's name is Steve Cohen and my drummer's name is Julius uh, Clay Paz and uh, it's a four piece two guitars bass and drums right. no keyboards you know, you, just straight no, ahead no keyboards uh, your cla it's your classic uh, Streamlined, uh, you know. Rock and roll band. Rock and roll. Tem attempt to slice your head off. <laughs> but not just with volume. You right. Know. We'll be there with uh, watching watching our scouts this evening at the Ritz with the Smithereens. All right. And it's Richard Lloyd. We've been listening to the new LP, of which we have five to give away. 212-598-3038 is the number to call. So uh, you give us a call, I believe Sherry will take your names as she's standing in the other studio not listening to me, and uh, she'll write down uh, who's going to win. So five Field of Fire LPs. Richard, thanks a million for Thank coming you, in you. and talking with us this evening, and we look forward to the next record and the show this evening. Okay. Any last words for the uh, tri-state area? Well, just hope to see you. Okay. Thanks a lot. You've been listening to Richard Lloyd and Hugh on the new afternoon show. And this is the Blaster Opus, Field of Fire. Yeah, yeah, eight and a half minutes of pure fun. <laughs> On WNYU-FM, New York. <laughs>